Welcome to the Indoni Leadership Campus. For the last year and a half, we've been running a program here to teach students whole life sustainability. We are so excited to give you a little insight today and a little tour of what we've been doing here and what we plan to do in the future. So please take a few minutes to join us and see what's going on. So while this water tower is a huge asset to us, we recognize the need to diversify our water uh, input because not everyone has access to funds for this kind of resource, nor do they have the electricity to provide for the pump for it. So we are going to be a good example of diversifying water input by having uh, two other inputs as well, which is rainwater collection, which we've already started on. And the other one is having a reservoir, which will be fed from a canal that we have access to, thankfully, as a farm. So this reservoir, we're going to dig it at the highest point of the farm so that it can be gravity fed to the rest of the irrigation system when we need it to be. And that way, we make sure that we don't overly deplete the groundwater from the borehole that's feeding this water tower. The other thing we're going to do to actually save the need for water, because one thing is diversifying water input, the other thing is diversifying ways that you can actually reduce your water need. And we're going to do that through swales. And swales are shallow ditches that are dug against the elevation of the land to help retain water and slow it down so that there's not so much runoff. That will keep more water on the land when it rains. Here you can see an example of a small to medium swale, which is leading behind me into a much deeper swale. These ditches will slow down the water, as I said, so that it can not rush off the land, but instead penetrate better, not just for the benefit of the plants, but for the benefit of replenishing our underground aquifer. That way we have more water in the aquifer to replenish what we're actually taking via the borehole. You can see next to our housing that some of the students are cooking their lunch right now. And if we walk a little bit outside the gate here, you can see this is our Wendy house, which is actually our only classroom at the moment. All of our other classes are held on porches and under trees right now. We're looking forward to the completion of a maker space. This is a future plan for a large workshop where we're going to have big rooms for things like carpentry and welding, but also some smaller classrooms for other skills such as sewing and even small classrooms for Bible study and leadership development. We'll even have a classroom that will be dedicated as a computer lab so that they can learn some basic computing skills. We can't wait to have more than just this Wendy house um, so that the students can really um, have more space to invest in their learning. Here we have a ravine that was on the property when we first got here. And previously it was used as a garbage dump. We initially thought this would be a great place for that reservoir, but we found that this is really not ideal as it's not the highest place on the property. So we're not going to get all the benefit of the elevation that, that the higher place will give us. So instead we're using it as grounds for vegetables. And actually it having been a garbage pit, a trash pit, is really serving us well because there's a lot of organic matter in the soil already. We love seeing the transformation and success of this vegetable garden because it shows that you can turn waste into something valuable. And that's an attitude we're trying to instill into our students, is that you need to see what kind of assets you might already have at your disposal but you don't even know it yet. The organic matter from the trash pit is actually helping our vegetables grow even better, even though we initially thought this should be our reservoir. So we love this creative thinking and um, flexibility of thought. And that's something that we continue to see develop in the students and we're so proud of them for making this part a success. Most pig farmers in Eswatini put their pigs on a large concrete slab. That is for ease of cleanup and removal of manure. But here, we challenge that tradition by putting our pigs here temporarily. 
and now it is this beautiful vegetable patch because we just let the manure lie where it was and now we're using that fertile soil. Now we've moved our pigs to a new location where they will work on that soil and it will become a beautiful garden in the future as well. If you keep up with our vlogs, you'll know that this nursery and this banana circle are some of the first things we ever put on the property a year and a half ago. Proud to say they are still going strong. We now have a very full nursery full of a large variety and diversity of plants. Next to it, we have this large open clearing, which is where we plan on putting the maker space for the workshops and the classroom areas. Next to that, we also have our recycling center, which is where we put every single bit of waste that comes from the farm and it goes to the recycling center to be used in one way or another. We actually have very little waste that needs to go off of the farm. We mentioned the need for more student housing. So we've made a plan and we decided to start with year one. So here I am on the year one part of campus and we've just last week built this test structure behind me. This platform is where we plan to have a canvas tent where two students will sleep. We're then going to surround this platform with shade cloth for a little bit of privacy and wind reduction and some um, shade and protection from the rain because it rains very hard here. We plan on having six of these structures for the incoming boys next year and six of these structures for the girls. This will be uh, a nice introduction into Udoni because we don't want it to be um, feeling like there's not anything left to develop. So our plan is that each year of students, the housing will look a little bit different. They'll learn new techniques of building. So perhaps next year they'll learn another alternative building method. I'm standing at the homestead side of the farm now, where I mentioned there are some guest cottages and a farmhouse. And we've been using those for classrooms and housing, but we know that we can't use those forever. So we would really appreciate prayers for the fundraising and resources necessary so that we can move the program all the way out to the farm and have the space that we really need to make this program a success long term. We would appreciate also your prayers for uh, wisdom as we continue to build out this curriculum. We would appreciate prayers for partners and advocates so that we have buy-in from not just donors but also the community here because we intend this program to affect our neighbors in a positive way as well. Furthermore, we would appreciate your prayers for unity so that our staff and students don't just feel like they're part of a program but they're part of a family. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, Salani Gatley. Thank you.